examinations in India. Way back. So that's how uh, me and my fellow academicians looked into it. And one of my colleges was affiliated to the Queen's Magnet University back in London. And uh, the, the question how this came is that you know I have a scripts, though it was a conservative examination happened in India, and this has to be queried over there, then it has to get evaluated, it has to come back to us, then we have to adapt, uh, uh, you know, for the, the normalization, all those things that you are very much aware of, all the, 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 the whole procedures which is in the picture. But my question <clears throat> duly raised over there. How this seamless connectivity is possible when, when, when we already having any emails uh, in that way? And in those days, uh, the scanner was, an, uh, you know, the high cost. And it was a new technology bond for put in one page would have been, say, around 20 MB size or so, so, something as such. But however, I started, uh, my management then was very much, uh, you know, eager and rather supported my thoughts, uh, how we could be able to connect uh, in, a, in the technological medium. Uh, anyhow, in that way that I started, uh, you know, scanning the answer scripts and shipping through email, get my results, uh, evaluations done and get the, the, the evaluated sheets immediately so that, you know, my results could be much faster. So, and having said this, that I discussed with few people who have been uh, into the IT world and, uh, and I could able to connect in this way that, uh, um, you know, that so-called that you know, I started initiating the digitalizing the examinations. And the very same was been, uh, you know, such kind of uh, the, the thoughts was been observed in uh, the Visvesvara Technological University. I also worked for a very brief time over there and my contribution for the digitalizing for the one of the biggest, even today, uh, the largest university across India. So we could able to get uh, deliver the technology enabled services for the examinations and somehow from there you know uh, my journey as a faculty in management studies and my journey as an examiner coordinator special officer uh, you know office of special duty uh, to the deputy controller to the control of to various and i've been also been an examiner to the various private uh, private universities including you know institute of eminence to the center of excellences across you know, be it North India, South India, across Pan India, all of now I could able to say, I don't have a count of that, but I could, I should say around 30 plus universities that I'm into the part of the external uh, members, which uh, immensely contribute for the reform for the examination. So, and this is, this is my very short CV. I could able to tell to the, your audience through this medium. So it's, it's as such, it's not a short one, but it's, it's a big one, sir. And uh, <laughs> being uh, a personality in different role, that's definitely going to help the organization wherever you will be going. So the question that I want to ask you, um, now at whatever places you have been, uh, those universities were affiliated universities or a uh, unitary sort of an university? No, those, uh, see, uh, the trend of private university or deemed to be university has picked up from past uh, 10 years. Earlier to that, it's most of it was into the, you know, the affiliate universities or there were standalone universities which was recognized under the AICT. That's as simple in the Indian, uh, you know, the nation is in concern. <clears throat> in Pan India, this is what the stature of all those things. Exactly. Much of it was into the affiliate universities. And that is what I said when I started, it was in a standalone university, a standalone institution only recognized under the AICT. That is how the management started help me in, uh, you know, recognizing the technology enabling services. And having taken those experiences over there, I could be able to, uh, you know, give it for the, the affiliate university itself so that they could able to make a passage for the, you know, the affiliate colleges so that they could, the evaluation can be done as at the, you know, faster rate. Uh, sir, I have gone through your university website and I do come to know that you are having something in the form of a sort of an architecture in the sense that you are having school of management and school of uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. And then you are having an administrative sort of an architecture and uh, just below that particular administrative architecture, you are having these different sorts of schools. Mm -hmm. So is it the case that the university uh, conduct the examinations or, or whatever the academic activity? And they percolate it around this particular uh, uh, schools? 
See, first, I believe on the every university believes in its academic freedom first. And having said this, it also believes in the the the, the talent and the nerve, the, the resources which is been bought into the uh, into the system. So we believe in that way that you know that the course owner, especially in the private universities today, whatsoever I could able to see that the course owner or the course facilitator or the course teacher in any you know the, the term that you could re refer into. These people are the first people who will be evaluating uh, their own courses. Yes. So this is how we, we, we consider that. Why I say is, uh, there are two reasons. One, uh, every batch is not the same batch. And every batch will not be, you know, uh, suddenly it will not get matured. I will have on one small example over here. When I was having a discussion with my director, previous director of, uh, for, for a brief amount of time, and I was just putting my immature thoughts over there, sir. Better than that when I when we were uh, pursuing my you know bachelors over there, we showed some sense of maturity. And nowadays I could see that there is no you know there is no sense of a maturity. They are immature. So then he was an assistant professor and went on to become a vice chancellor. And he said the same to me. You did not know that what maturity you got when you were into the you know you know once you bought into the bachelor course. You were in the very same level of immaturity what you see today and rather you are feeling today. So which means if you feel that you know that there is immaturity in the, the students in the, in, the, in the, the batch, which means the batch shall remain as it is only. It is you over the years you are getting matured and your perception is getting changed. So likewise, having said this, the faculties will have the first feeling of every batch. The teachers will have the pulse, you know, uh, the pulse of the every batch. Probably it could be a slow learners, or it could be the average learners, or it could be the you know amazingly active uh, learners, or composition of any kind of these three. You know, I don't know how much people will fall into this the slow learner basket, or the average basket, or normal learner basket, or the uh, or the very active learner basket. Only. But the teacher who has taught the subject are very much aware. This is what my batch has been, and this is my this is, will be my roadmap for the next three years or two years or for the four years, and this is how I need to go ahead. So in that way, the course owners will be the first evaluators. Probably, uh, th this is how I think. Rather, the management thinks into it. And secondly, what happens? Uh, we often, as a human, and tend to make kind of an errors. Uh, in, in, in evaluation knowingly or unknowingly, mm -hmm. intentionally, and I don't know about what are the forces, the dynamics which should have been done. And that is where me as an administrator comes into the picture, where if I have to see to it that some kind of you know, scripts or some kind of, you know, uh, you know the, the trend is going down, it is me as a controller who will necessitate, or rather will take a second evaluation so that the opinion is generated. The first one was right or the second one was right. And then, uh, having said that, uh, uh, about all those things, still, you know, the further opinion to cater the, the, the larger interest of the public, we could able to make the, the average out of it, or rather you take the, uh, the, the highest out of it. What happens today in the private universities, especially to make uh, market penetration or the market impression, you know, and most of it, when you studied, when I studied, when uh, most much of our generation studied, it was the academic oriented, faculty oriented schools or colleges. Today, we are at the student centric. What is their prerogative? What is their requirement? We are trying to reach out over there uh, so that, you know, that we could be able to connect, uh, you know, in today's uh, students generation as such. So in that way, uh, my uh, penetration towards the evaluation goes like that. First, I will give to the those course owners who have already felt the batch. Okay, if they do wrongdoings, yes, I be the first person who take a guard that either I might fire them or rather I might warn them based upon the, the intensity of error or wrongdoings over there. So this is how when I, I look into it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so you, you have rightly said that the university has to be student-centric and obviously academic has to play a very crucial role from that particular perspective. Now you being at different universities, so from the student-centric point of view, 
you or might be your team have implemented something in the form of an end to end uses uh, use of ict for examination so yeah, starting well, from the that. admission till the student uh, completes his graduation or post graduation or even doctoral and then coming up yes, uh, yes, with yes. a degree convocation yeah uh, see today uh, say i let you know things and all uh, i'll give you three scenarios uh, for this question and i have an answer for uh, what kind of an uh, you know i have been into which university what senior fits into that and if they are looking for it university has already been established and they have a, a, you know the surplus uh, amount out of it and i need not to think about the capital investment behind uh, uh, you know for the my examination requirement i should be only able to convince my management how e to e works end to end works and what is my deliverables and what could be the university Thank service you. uh, on a level agreement we could exchange through this technology enabled so this is a examination reforms comes with the technology and technology always a capital driven we don't get the opex driven in spite of having no opex driven or opex model over there examination department cannot take chances on the operational level of engagement so it is exactly. always a capital intensive uh, <laughs> department so we leverage for another 5 10 years depending upon that how the technology that we could be able to handle it so we convince management that to get in such kind of an a capex model of the technologies and there are possible chances getting into the second scenario if a university is somewhere in a moderate level and they won't believe on the, the surplus rather there's a break even in their revenue generation so i limit a uh, very very essential services i see to it that we divide the entire university administration into the uh, must have should have not to have as of now so we could able to differentiate between three or four various capacities and we enable those requirements into those must haves into the technology enabled so i have been said like this um, in the break even you find number of intakes to the number of admissions shall be remain the same so what i have proposed is suppose 100 students is my intake probably their application generated would be 130 125 and their uh, cut off would be 120 so if i uh, for them okay admission process is more important and result publication protocol is more important so these two becomes more technologically enabled and all other things falls in the paper format or other conservative way in some and there is an another case which i say that you know it's a young unit young university okay uh, their numbers are very scattered they don't know though i have an intake permission of 120 or 300 or 500 whatever the numbers are but i'm not sure that it will be filled completely or not in that manner and i may not be able to say that i will put my capital in, you know investment either of any parts but i would know what is the uh, you know the projection by waiting for two or three years my timeline should be able to speak whether where to invest my capital uh, on what technology that i should be able to put in so this is one and nowadays it's something new trend is also coming because many of the new universities are backed up by corporates they won't be you know they, there is no scars on the investment side so they will definitely ask before you know, opening up an account uh, you know opening up the university they will ask for the what is the total capital expenditure that might hit at the exactly. time of uh, opening so in that cases there are many corporate universities they will immediately come up with uh, the end-to-end -end solutions tied up with outsides and they'll get the things done and what peculiar particularly i have seen uh, though i'll be uh, very technologically savvy with things and all somewhere uh, the, our indian universities much of it uh, especially in the private universities much of it in the private universities uh, are falling into the uh, prey of outside vendors so i see that uh, very clearly over there that you know somewhere uh, you know private uh, you know firms are trying to nudge the examination department stating that you know we run we know much better than other people or not i strongly yeah. believe that you know every university should have the internal it development Same. partly uh, you know from exchange support from the outsiders but not fully every operational level should be there well within the university setup and that 
is the way where I believe the grades or the numbers or whatsoever it is will be kept confidential. Though we have a lot of problem, you know, technology enabled like in a cloud computing, there are you know, cloud servers that you could able to do, still, you know, in-house is much better than keeping in anywhere something outside. This is my assumption, sir. Exactly. The more the in-house development that will be there, the more secured your university will be and the more secured the academics will be. Absolutely. So my, my next question is uh, regarding the uh, question bank and question paper. So one of the things that has just recently happened in the state of Maharashtra, currently the 12th mm -hmm. HSA examination is going on. And the very mm -hmm. first paper that was of English and in that English paper, instead of giving questions, straight away answers were given for two or three bits. Then okay. in the second paper, again, the very second day, the, the numbering was wrong. So do you think that, do we, do we have something in the form of a question bank? And not only that, we should have something in the form of a question paper template. And why not to have a technology that is going to play a crucial role in designing a question paper? Yes, sir, you're right. Uh... I call it as a content authoring uh, software or a con content authoring uh, mechanism nowadays. You know, in a busy world, when you have a large affiliations of students and large amount of teachers being working for the kind of some kind of a progress, then there will be always in a ripple effect and where you don't know where the ripple actually started, where was the burnout started and somehow that becomes a devastating when, when you're actually facing the students on the day of examinations. That is one of those reasons which I could say, you know, the total mark would be gone wrong or rather exchange of the question paper to the scheme of valuation that would have been changed. I am very, very uh, support of this content authoring uh, software nowadays, which is available outside. At the same time, we could build up in-house also, exactly. which automatically or rather the way that we use macros and we use our own BPA things and all, we should be able to limit or rather the faculty will get a sense that you're doing wrong. Something is going wrong in your the question paper format. If it is total is going wrong, it will limit to you. It should signal you. Some interactive mechanism is being, I'm trying to place before in my, wherever I've been, wherever the universities I'm trying to go, there is an you know, interactive mechanism before it is getting moderated. Moderated is about the content of the syllabi, whether it is actually reflecting the, the entire syllabus or not, before going to the public. But to understanding the aesthetics part of the question paper, like course code, or might be a course title, or could be duration of an examination, or could be the total marks, uh, you know, or the total marks of the examination and the maximum marks where the student has to write. There are possible chances even at the instructions, the faculty with or without knowing, they probably do the uh, you know, the language errors. Uh, so these things can be bought, uh, you know, by the administrative, by the examination department. I only allow moderation only to that portion where I am very limited and you are someone is boss, like on the content on the syllabus part of it. Yes, it is very essential and it is, uh, you know, moderately available in the market nowadays. But we should, again, uh, the care must be very essential. We should not always go with, uh, you know, having AMC or something. The entire software must be owned by the exam department. And we should have a multiple logins so that, you know, a link can be sent to the number of faculties who has been owning, uh, rather teaching those courses. Okay. And this will enable us, uh, you know, creating the question paper. Here I have two systems before us. I only ask two sets or three sets or one set, depending upon the culture of the question paper or sorry, culture of the management. Or I always seek, my position is the second opinion, which I'm trying to let you know. As the classes goes on, as the academic sessions are going on, I allow my faculty to feed the number of questions in this, uh, in this given login. So like, you know, if 100 marks is the question paper, I will ask him to set, uh, you know, give me a 500 marks questions that I will take uh, you know, 10 questions out of uh, 50 questions that he has made for section A. For section B, I will take three or four questions, four questions out of 10, which he has been made. What happens is that, you know, even the faculty will not come to know which question is bound to come over, uh, come over there, which also mm -hmm. enables me 
having said this <clears throat> okay a controller can able to uh, control on the, the the type of question paper which is being going public say if okay. university would like to have a easy question paper i could able to do the easy question paper because next to question i have been asked you know, level of the the, the the intensity of the the level of question paper and i also say what kind of a bloom's taxonomy which is been updated exactly. so in this year what happens controller will have if i have to see if i have to give the easiest question paper this is my pass percentage in the fail percentage if i have to give if i give moderate question paper this is my fall out of uh, the result if i have to give the hard question paper this is my fall out so on one kind of a session i could able to rather the examination department could able to judge the uh, you know the intelligence of the any given batch and based upon that we could able to you know uh, take it further in upcoming academic years so that is where uh, what i think is that relative grading is going to play a very, very crucial role uh, because uh, the mob that will be having for that particular faculty Mm. so that will be this that that faculty will be deciding in what particular fashion the grading has to be carried out so there instead mm. of going with absolute grading system the relative grading should play a very crucial role whatever you are saying for that the relative grading is definitely go going to help you so that the the level and all those things of the students will be mm -hmm. taken into consideration in that relative grading yeah of course uh, see uh, i limit my opinion on the relative grading Uh, having why I say is that uh, always see the cream layer the students will never get in the doubt. The only thing those people who fall under the past level or the lower uh, most uh, 20 or 25 percent how we make uh, you know the classification under the relative grading. These people either are not considered as a pass or a fail. We'll just say that he has attempted the course. Say suppose if he if, if any student engages himself. Uh, in in an, uh, such kind of an industry after his education, okay, uh, you know the, the blame or rather I won't uh, I could say the blame might come back to the university itself because those uh, students who fall into that particular lower order basket may not carry the entire knowledge out of it exactly. of that particular course or that particular program or whatsoever it is. At the same time, I will not say that. And because they were in that basket, student could not able to do this. Might uh, probably you know we are trying to weigh the students' learning ability. I should also understand the the, the psyche of the students' learning ability. Whether the student is a slow learner, what are the various methodology that I could able to bring in, and how I could able to help him out in in uh, grade grade the student better. So in this way, uh, I. Uh, It, it again depends upon the university and the management how they fill out the vision and the mission and what is the passion uh, why they are into this business this business is most of it it's like you know as uh, a noble thought noble profession noble uh, you know commitment for the society but however i still need to understand or rather we the examination department should be able to design in such a way what is my explicit function from these examinations you want to just See to it that you know all the batch comes in, batch goes out, or rather we would like to value add. If you are putting in a value addition, what are the various value addition, academic value addition, addition, and your grading value addition? How these two could be able to come to an agreement or come to an adjustment or come to a consensus so that it will benefit for my stakeholder, that is our students, or 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 it could be the industry also, it could be the parents also. so in that way i my affirmative always goes that you know you have to evaluate based upon the requirement of the university at times it could be relatively be much better when the size of the school when the size of a school is very small exactly. in nature okay when your quantity is big when you have a bigger in numbers probably you have to think about going for absolute because my I can't able to go for the, all the students and see this is what I could able to do it work. So absolutely, it's self becoming the self uh, way of uh, you know looking into those things or not. This is my submission. Sir, do you have a data center facility? Do your university have a separate data center facility? Uh, at present, we are growing as a university. 
we are in the cards of bringing the the statistical uh, you know a model under the examination department itself but in my previous organizations wherever i have been work there was uh, you know uh, inside the examination model uh, department itself we have got out the statistical module and so as uh, uh, this one also got the digital enabling uh, services for the students like for the nad abc all exactly. those you know we could able to get those services also statistics is very important having said that i could understand my trend of the university at one end macro level i will also understand the trend of the program what of the program which i have been offered with i will also understand the trend of the each batches how they grown up over this span of given two year program or three year program four year program i will also could able to understand the the demand and the supply of the students over the span of years i will also understand uh, if i have to go further micro level uh, you know how is the performance of based upon the genders how is the the performance based upon uh, their the, the the family income and uh, their no, so we are so india is a beautiful fabric in coming to the you know in uh, sectoral divisions and all we respect what the, the government says and we should be able to understand okay if this category is doing well okay this category is not doing well so we should be able to take up some kind of an attention or rather we'll take a feedback over there and we try to go and approach to those set of the students why we are doing why what's problem what is the you know the pain areas so we could able to narrow it down to that extent so we either it could be one student right. or a group of students suffering but we could be able to go and look into those things also and this is how i see in a in a in, a, in the system centric exactly. department yes yes exactly sir now the the question that i raise uh, is because uh, data has become an integral part of any organization and uh, unless and until we are not going to secure it it will become very much difficult because the external interference will always be there the data will always get, get managed so that is where yes. the cyber walls and all those things will be playing into uh, will be playing a crucial role now the next mm. question that i want to ask you it it i don't know what what the situation at various university you played the role but wherever i have been might be in uh, dr baba saheb ambedkar technological university or the marathwada university i have seen that every time when 10 certificates are coming for verification at least one to two were fake certificates of course mm. so whether something in the form of a demating of degrees or something like that have have you done it uh, in at various places see uh, uh, i have done it uh, to an extent so i could able to filter the fake certificates very immediately at the you know, at, at the at the grass uh, grassroots level itself uh i have uh, e copies of all the students when i dispatch the grade sheets for the students so one thing that i put their us number or their uh, enrollment number or uh, whatever the numbers they have i immediately go and check their transcripts so that you know, i could be able to enable them whether the student is rightly you know asking for those things or not or there are possibilities where we get uh you know the paper based uh, you know verification which possibly you know teases a lot rather it will be more uh, you know we not be able to look at in a very naked eyes how how these things possibly goes on i bought uh, uh, way back in two universities back on mit world peace university i engaged with a great sheet which has got a blockchain technology exactly okay blockchain technology you know i don't want those interferences which should come and knock the door of examination department you exactly. are looking into the examination uh, grade sheets or transcript or the, uh, the degree certificate just put your uh, mobile over there there is a scanner it will scan you and if there is any financial upi gateway which uh, you should demands for you pay for that and immediately it will reflect that the grade card or the uh, Uh, you know the degree certificate the student is showing for the verifying officers or any other universities or the companies or the corporates okay they'll immediately get that the, the the certificate is authentic genuine or not so this is how i in you know, i bought this in 2018 uh, uh, if i have to be very precise i also uh, enabled that in uh, my previous organization the bennett 
and we are very young university in adani and i still hope for some new technology comes in in upcoming days i probably you know revise or rather re have a relook into it so being an administrator you might have observed sir that most of our time we spend in answering the queries and we mm. we answer those queries to our stakeholders might be from the mm. point of view of the student might be parents might be even if 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 it is an affiliating university then obviously the 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 mm. faculties or the principals of those affiliating university colleges or those in, institute and we I, i will not say waste but we spend lot of time in answering those queries and most yes. of the time it happens that it's the same sort of a question that are getting raised so why mm. not to have something very much similar to the sort of technology that nowadays that is coming in the form of a chat gpt or something like that whereby instead of we answering those queries why not a technology will be answering it yeah i i con conceived this idea and this university is brought into that manner that you know i am introducing ibot so that uh, you know if student can put uh, his usn number he will get the entire uh, his end to end what is his performance till date or any specific queries are there i try to put it in a 1 to 9 so again in say suppose if one is an exam department so he touches one and he will get a few more questions basing asking upon what is the is it in a hall ticket issue or is it in a transcript issue is it in a something a seat arrangement issue or is it something where the student could not able to write exam for certain issues i am listed in ibot in such a way that immediately all those solutions which he is looking forward can be done or and above if there is very superior a supernatural where even i could not able to think of even you cannot able to think of some which is hilarious uh, you know problem where the student is could not able to do certain things he those kind of the things will be entertained by the examination department for all yeah. the regular things i try bringing the ibots over here it should immediately right. should be able to get the answers and if still he is not convinced which clerk or the which division of staff that he has to go and take much more information on that so we send up to that direction So you are well ahead of many of the university in India, and as an administrator, you are also well ahead. And a well, oh. technology savvy. That's 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 great, sir. Now another Thank thing you. that we normally face uh, is that uh, obviously uh, the the paper setting. See, many many of the activities that are happening as far as examination is concerned, those activities never get streamlined in the sense that. Uh, we ask some sort of a paper setter to set the set the question paper many times he or she doesn't send it well in time then we have to send the reminders the mm. lot of notification we have to send and we, we have to manage all these particular activities through mails and all those things so why not to have something in the form of a crm customer relationship management where system mm. helps connected with customer it will be streamlining the process and will be improving not only mm. i will not say it as a profitability but it will improve the academic culture mm. sir uh, uh, i i you know i tried this answering you in, in previous question but now i let you know in a very different way because i won't limit only to the question paper as an administrator i also look at the the academic part of it having said that uh, in one of the opinions which i said if a teacher has produced that you know by next 3 months this is my course plan and this is how i am going to take my entire classes over here and i also put some certain, certain kind of an a checks over there as an administrator after one uh, class today i have taken one class say suppose on 24th 26th it will be a reminder that you have not done with an attendance part of the 24th question i mean 24th day bring in try put technology use over there so the same time i will interrupt you sir uh, within one please. minute the session will stop so you can connect it by a second link Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is, yes. is it the same link that you know? You no, no, no. Another link I have sent in the same mail. Okay, I just check it out, sir. So we'll we'll be hardly be having uh, another ten or ten uh, minutes. We'll be requiring. Okay. So the second link you can use if if this stops. Okay, sir. Yes, okay, go ahead, okay. sir.
Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. You may go ahead with your CRM, customer <laughs> relationship management. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I, I, I ensure those faculties, all my faculties, that they have to, uh, you know, need to meet my uh, requirements well within two to three days once the course plans are set. Have they committed for three months? It is their commitment to fulfill the administrative requirement also. Be it on the attendance part of the students, be it about the course completion out of it, or be it about the question paper rollout. I don't risk my faculties by end of the semester. Please give me two sets of question paper, or one set of question paper, or three set of question paper, or multiple questions so that I could able to generate things. No, I will put a checks and balances well within four days or seven days. Okay, whatever the question that you have completed, you have to upload your question paper questions to, to the content authoring engine so that it will be coming and sitting in my, uh, this one as a deposit. So once the, the course has been getting completed, similarly, on the same time, similarly, you know, uh, I have got the annual number of question papers in my hand as a controller, I could be able to take the either the the easy one or the moderate one, the hardest one based upon the questions, which is with the level of the question paper. So this is how I've been working with uh, various models, but the synergy uh, between the faculty and the administrators is always in a different uh, directions because we are all humans. Faculties do get exhausted because of their academics and they get, you know, uh, with their uh, other co you know, administrative roles. And so as the research roles and all, but uh, I'll be kind of an lenient for the one or two or three times. And if it repeats the same, that I'll be able to take uh, you know certain actions for uh, for their meeting, unable to meet my uh, you know, requirements and all. See, uh, politely, we, our work has to be done. There are very essential uh, things. Uh, I, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, uh, Personality and attitude should be there for the any control of examinations. Exactly. Personality is what I see, and my attitude depends upon to whom that I am talking with, or yes, which I am interacting yeah. with, or which individual. So based upon that, the controller reserves uh, like an you know, extension of seven days, three days, four days, and I see to it that you know, there is enormous amount of time in between uh, the, the entire question paper submission of each program. And the exemption commences. Usually, I see to it that the day where the course has been, uh, sorry, the semester completes by another one week, my question paper uh, should be done and it should be done, moderated, vetted by an, a moderator, subject expert or a HOD or a you know, dean should uh, vet that and it should be nicely placed before in my department. This is how I've been engaging to all these days. So you, you have been to various universities, sir. Uh, have you implemented any best practices at any one of this particular university, which is unique as compared to the conventional activities that are happen happening across universities? Hey, uh, I tried dismantling the exams. Being a controller, I tried dismantling the exams. And this is the beauty of the, uh, you know, as a controller, which I see. Most of the people say, no, we should be able to you know, test the student's uh, quotient, the intelligence quotient, or the memory of those days. We have various ways of adapting, uh, you know, testing the students. I, I give my, my my best practices, which I have bought in, uh, in, in Bennett University, was an open book examination. Exactly. The faculty could able to define uh, the rationale behind the course that he would like to take an open book examinations and each student will not get the same questions and the open book can be outside the campus or the faculty would like to monitor or rather facilitate he could able to judge or rather he could say that i would like to do in campus inside the library only so i have bought uh, open book and uh, are it present in my uh, present organization at adani university considering the national education policy reforms Considering the, the the exemption reforms of AICT, understanding the uh, you know the UGC reforms, ACTC reforms, and the considering about what are the best practices of uh, the NAT requirement. I'm trying to talk about the all the national agencies been working with the NBA, been working with uh, understanding the 
the, the Washington Accord of OBE, all those things and all. I have completely dismantled over here. Though it's a very new university, I said 50 marks is by with me, 50 marks there with you. You have an academic rigor, continual assessment. You do anything of your own. You take, you speak. By speaking to someone, if you believe that there is a value addition for the student, give the marks. I am just bothered. But there must be kind of an, a dialogue between a teacher and the, fact, uh, and the student. Or if you say, sir, no, I don't want to take term and exam, the student will get uh, anxiety on my examination because it all goes with the numbers. There are certain courses, other teachers might say, sir, this is a completely, uh, you know, field oriented. I would like to take project based examinations. I enabled all such kind of an examination over here. It is my requirement. The faculty has to predefine what kind of examinations he right. would like to take it before the commencement of the semesters. Semester only. Great, I don't great. entertain at the end of the semester. I only entertain at the first time before the commencement of the semester. Certain courses can be OBE, certain courses can be determined exams, examinations, certain courses can be MCQ based, certain questions can be in the project based examinations, certain courses can be go into the field, get certain things, certain courses can be just go, uh, you know, meet the certain factories or the industries, go to the companies, corporates, gain certain you know, practical knowledge, come over here, do it. At the same time, I also allowed jurist based examination. It is very limited in professional examinations and all. I am allowing a jurist based examinations where I bring subject expertise from corporate and I also, uh, the internal course owner will be there. Okay, these two people will just gauge the student by having a discussion about the subject great 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 sir uh you, you have spoken about the washington accord at the same time you have mentioned somewhere the bloom's taxonomy uh yes, do sir. you really think sir uh, this is going to play a crucial role as far as uh, the new education policy is concerned or it just for the sake of uh, uh creating an accord and all those things hey my uh let me tell you my uh, PhD is based on the education management, bringing total quality in the university administration and education management. So having said this, uh, you know, earlier to the Washington Accord, there was a Sydney Accord and earlier to the Sydney Accord, there was a Paris Accord also. <laughs> and what is this actually, this Accord speaks is that, you know, whether the Indian diploma certificates, bachelor degree, master degree as is, is meeting to the uh, to the international standards of the Ivy League or to the Western uh, standards, which those things. So in that way, we had a temporary uh, membership in uh, Paris Accord and so as with the Sydney Accord. With various challenges of those two decades, 20, 20, 25 years of that, you know, we were able to put our commitment telling that, you know, we also meet the global standards based upon whatever the, 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 the monitoring framework are there. So in somehow in, through that, the India will become a part of the, you know, the, 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 the IV members or the India documents, sorry, the diploma certificates, bachelor degree became more valid uh, to that. You should remember uh, rather we all study when, when you apply for foreign countries, there was a necessity of letter of recommendation that this student was doing good in these subjects. Intensive three or four letter of recommendations were essential in those days before uh, the Washington Accord was. The Washington Accord minimized those letter of recommendations in such a way because we, the outside world started respecting the, the, the Indian diplomas, the Indian uh, certifications program. And, and that is how this NBA came into the future, National Board of Accreditation, to maintain the, the academic rigor, infrastructure rigor, all those things and all. So uh, coming back to your question and the, uh, you know, in the commitment of uh, our benchmarking of our, our graduation program and along with it by Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is, uh, uh, for me, it's nothing connecting with the, the, the benchmark. Bloom's taxonomy always connects to the the students uh, readiness of understanding the knowledge or rather i could say the learning uh, processes there, you know, there, there are five or six categories i don't want to get into the theory part of all those yeah. things and all but for me there it gets me a classification of a students people can divide into four i divide only for the three like you know uh, a basket of slow learners and there's a basket of uh, uh, average learners 
and there is another basket of uh, very active learners how you as a college or a university could able to cater the the weaker most that is the first question as the ethics comes in the future for the slow learners aap kya kar sakte so i try looking upon upon to those things and my me as a controller i alert my respective deans that hey look these are the list of students who have been less than average it is something that you have to make them active and there are possible po various possible ways why the students might be not so you know average learner or the active learner possibly because of the finance or home on a household income possibly because of their uh, internal family struggle or it could be some uh, you know being isolated by their own family i have seen rich kid or rather the family is wealthy enough but student is slow learner and i could say there is a 98 percentile student in i uh, jw examinations could not able to crack uh, fluid mechanics examinations in the first year of the civil engineering so i could see what's happening here. so there is a possible different dynamics different forces in slow learner program so i always try to you know, take it at very close to my heart this is more important for me to elevate to get the quality uh, you know quality education those yes. who are active and those who are average i always pat them motivate them see this is a outer you know world where you could go and swim across it is only for them to show the right direction or facilitate the right moment and they will hit to the core for me slow learners is more important chalo beta aap idhar aa jao how i could be able to help you it is requires in a physical counseling i do if it is requires in a clinical counseling the university should be able to provide that or if it requires in a kind of a faculty mentorship hand holding the on one or two courses you have we have so you know has to do it if it is required for us to revisit to the certain courses where the student could not able to understand probably we should be able to do it end of the day say you are creating a, a generation to 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 make india as a super power exactly okay if you filter here only so what is that you are going to try and prove yourself for the for the next generations so i need to tap those best things in his talent and i should able to conduct the examinations utilizing his own talent to get my outcome this is what i i, I submit over here sir my my, my last question is uh, regarding phd uh, now i have seen on your website also you do have phd programs yes sir and for the phd program uh, obviously you might be even having something in the form of an online thesis submission and evaluation sort sort of thing so again mm -hmm. an ICV, icit based solution starting from the admission or the pet examination yes. till the degree will get award but the yes, question sir. that arises about the, the the no doubt about the quality and at the same time now since the government uh, government is asking us to implement various courses in in the regional languages also but the sort mm. of plagiarism software nowadays that are available they normally support the regional languages so mm. what do you think about this sir uh, i won't say that uh, english must be the communication for the uh, you know for learning and all but at the same time english becomes one of the essential things when you are going for the higher order education i admit for the ug and pg that if you write in a regional language or if you could able to do it highly appreciated for those universities who come with in the regional uh, language and bring the students into the mainstream but it is also essential for the university to uh, to help the students who come from that kind of a background to introduce in a language of communication where commonly it is been used wide across i am not bro that fan of english or any other thing but as a university in ug and pg you as a facilitator uh, by giving offering a program is a one small task to gauge the student or rather introducing in a communication skill so that at least in a higher order of phd or pdf you must be able to do it in a language where the enter globally could be able to accept it the today's uh, phd uh, you know uh, as uh, i should able to say there were three kind of you know, revolutions which has happened one you are aware about the industrial revolution exactly another uh, in you and me when we are all youth uh, there was an information revolution 
and nowadays we have all these the social revolution been happening connected with the social media all those things are now and there are a lot of opportunistic uh, opportunistic agencies across as as you also see and i also see you know you uh, know we support for thesis writing we we support for uh, your article submission we support for uh, it's what are you trying to do this social revolution comes with two things one is an advantage end that you could source lot amount of information at, at one wherever you sit and do at the same time you are uh you know unethically you know, you're trying to practice more unethical way for your higher order learning where where do you stand i say at least this time you have to make hard work you know i see iits or to the best of the ivy leagues of the universities it says minimum 10000 hour work must be given by a scholar 10000 work 10 10000 hours of work now fitting in 3 years 4 years it is the student has to do and the supervisor has to see absolutely should see feel that scholar is really putting his synergy energy everything in getting his some kind of outcome of the the, the higher order learning then only it makes some sense then how we could able to deviate or rather dilute the plagiarism but nowadays being social uh, revolution we take it from google rephrase you know rephrase or paraphrase it you put over here and then i can show it in the plagiarism check acha now my uh, percentage index have come down see what things happens today you have a phd in your title and uh, you may not be a good teacher you are not a good facilitator and you are only dependent on those model which you have been worked and got this to got this uh, degree so i see in upcoming days if this happens if this trend goes on Uh, no output of phd will be valid there will be another higher order learning that there will be certification after phd that you write the sentence exam and come into the university level of teaching so i feel that should not happen phd yes intensive learning is very essential that to stand alone by one student thanks a lot it it's been thank a wonderful you, interaction and once again from my bottom of my heart i i, I appreciate your uh, gestures and your your strong views on whatever the questions that were raised to you it has been a very fruitful interaction not only from the point of view of being an interaction that has taken place between us but at the same time in coming future the type of role that has been held held by you and that the type of work techno savvy work that has been carried out by it's definitely going to play a very crucial role at whatever organization you will be working and you will be going sir So we are also having with us uh, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Yadav. Uh, yes, you can yes, sir. And if you want, you Pardon, can. Sir. You want to ask just something? Just I want to can... say something. Yes, yes. Go Pardon, ahead. Sir, just I want to say something. Actually, I am very big fan of Benu Gopal sir because he has created this group uh, during the lockdown, and I am learning many things from this group because uh, everybody just posts a question and someone is just gives the answer. I am learning many things. Uh, today I have joined this group only due to uh, Benu Gopal sir. Just I want to Great. listen if, uh, your conversation. So definitely I will learn many things because yesterday we have conduct uh, we just do talk to talk one to one. And today uh, there are many thoughts which now clear in my mind. Yes, what can be best possible answer? What uh, can we can implement for? Uh, as like you mentioning about blockchain technology, also a uh, very good point raised by uh, Benu Gopal sir about PhD. now what uh, today we are doing there are many agencies that's providing just you have to provide some money and they're just giving you degree so there is no validity of that phd but you know this is happening in our society so uh, some yes yes you're right you're absolutely right on that so we mm-hmm. as an examiner when when society becomes smart we should be outsmart the society <laughs> this is what i would able to say we should be able to pay attention on checks and balances and see to it that right filtration is been done and do good for those students who have been committed and doing good for themselves not for you know pleasing the other people so dr venu gopal you have been uh, an uh, all round personality and why i am calling you as an all round personality the reason is the type of uh, portfolios that you are holding and will be holding in your uh, future endeavors sir so it it it's been a great interaction sir and i again once again thank you i thank I you sir sh- for inviting me here 
Uh, it's always pleasure to have an, a peer interaction like you and so, so with our own known friend Pradeep Kumar also. And uh, as I said, uh, I founded this association and been you know, heading all those things to unite the, the, the controls of examinations. In it's a great initiative, sir. June, yeah, yeah, in a month of May, June, there will be an international conference bound to happen. I'll definitely seek your all support so that we yes, can. Yes, sure, to... sir. Huh? Thanks Thank for sir, I have, sir, I have also a question, sir. Please arrange a session on the blockchain technology, how you can use sure. your. I'll, I will definitely sure, do sure, that. sure, sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will share the video, sir. Please, I will share the video with you, both of you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.